section 4.5, uh, page 216. Uh, first I will go through that example and then I will also see what uh, will happen or how should we adjust this formula to the situation where we are producing ourselves instead of buying from an external uh, vendor. Uh, but first, have a look at uh, problem 10 on page uh, two, uh, 216. And here, we can read the text first. A speciality coffee house sells Colombian coffee at a fairly steady rate at 280 pounds annually. And the beans are purchased from a local supplier for 2.40 per pound. Coffee house will estimate that it costs $45 in paperwork and labor to place an order for the coffee and the holding costs are based on a 20% annual interest rate. So now let's try to solve this problem. First, determine the optimal order quantity for this Colombian coffee. So let's try to summarize this and uh, find the values of the different parameters according to this text. And we can see that we have a demand, the lambda value, uh, which will be uh, 280 uh, as the annual demand for this coffee. And we have a value, unit value, the C parameter, is said to be 2.40. In addition, we are given the K value, or the K parameter, ordering cost, placing one order, then you have to count for $45. And at last, we are given the internal, or, or the interest rate, as 20%. So, by reading the text, finding the values of the different parameters, we should now be able to solve this problem and find the optimal order size for this type of product, this Colombian coffee. And we can find the holding cost as the product of the unit value and the interest rate, CI which is 2.40 multiplied by 20%, uh, which is 0 0.48. And then it should be quite easy to calculate an answer. Problem A, find the optimal order size. The Q should be the square root of 2 multiplied by K and lambda divided by H. And we have all these values here, which will give us a total of 229. This is the optimal order size. Order 229 pounds of coffee every time you place an order, according to the values of the parameters shown here. So in question B, what is the time between the placement of the orders? Well, we know that the cycle time uh, will be the time between you are placing one order and until you are placing the next order. Denoted as the parameter uh, capital T, it will be the value of Q, the order size, divided by the annual demand, which now will be 229 divided by 280, which is uh, the fraction of 0 0.8179, which again can be multiplied by 12 to get this in the time unit of month or multiplied by 52 to get it for a time unit of, of weeks, for example. But uh, this value is a fraction of a year and it will be approximately 9.81 months. So 
So this is uh, now the policy according to, to the va parameter values in this problem. Place an order of 229 pounds of coffee every 9.81 months. Uh, so we are asked in problem C, what is the average annual cost of holding and setup due to the uh, for, for this item? Well, we uh, know that we can just skip the purchase cost because it's not relevant for, for, for this case. So now let's look at the cost function G of the optimal Q, which is the ordering cost and the holding cost. Ordering cost, the demand divided by Q to find the number of times in one full year for uh, we will place an order and multiply by K, the one time cost of placing an order, plus one half Q multiplied by H. This is the formula for calculating the relevant cost in this situation. Uh, I have a solution from the authors of the textbook which uses another formula which can be used when we know that we are using the optimal Q. I will not prove this formula. If you want, you can see the proof from me. but. Uh, uh, it can be useful instead of calculating each uh, each part of the uh, of the cost function for itself. Then you can rather use the formula, which is two multiplied by k lambda and h. This can be used when you know that this q is the optimal one. <coughs> and we have all the parameter values, so it should be pretty easy to calculate. You can try both this function and this function, and you will get the same result. So the optimal or, or the, the cost in this case will be $110. And you can also find that this one will be 55 and this one will be 55 if you look to each part of the cost function here, which will well also show that this situation holds, that the ordering cost and the holding cost is exactly the, the same at the optimal level here. Each of them will be 55, and in total, you will get 110 when you are calculating out this formula here. So problem D. If the replenishment lead time is three weeks, we should determine the reorder level based on the on-hand inventory. And three weeks is three out of 52. So we can try to find the reorder point as three weeks out of 52, three divided by 52 and multiply by the annual demand. <coughs> the lead time, which is three weeks out of 52, and multiplied by 280. And then we will get the total of 16.15. Uh, uh, and in this case, actually, fractions might be reasonable. We are talking about pounds of coffee. Uh, uh, and well, the problem text doesn't state anyone about the, the, the units this, uh, this product is sold in. Uh, sometimes you, uh, fractions will not give any meaning, so you have to round to the closest integer. But in this case, it might give, uh, give some meaning to use uh, fractions here. Otherwise, you should round upwards to make sure that the reorder point should be 17 instead of 16. Otherwise, you might have a, uh, have a stock out, a, sh a small stock out before you receive the new order. So here, this was a quite simple example showing, well, 
read through the text, find the value for all the parameters, and calculate the optimal order size, and then find the cost and the cycle time according to this optimal order size. Uh, so, then let's have a look at what will happen when you have a finite production rate. You're producing yourself instead of buying from another vendor. Well, <coughs> when we are producing ourselves, it will take time. We have so far looked at the situation where you are buying the items <coughs> and if you are buying the items we have the situation which we have seen you will receive the delivery at the same point you will have a fixed demand and you will receive a new order like this but the problem is, when we are producing ourselves, we will usually use some time on the production. Uh, the production rate uh, might uh, be different for different products, of course, uh, but sometimes, uh, well, when you are, you are producing, you also need to uh, consider the time used for production. So, instead of this vertical line which will increase the level directly of the of the stock directly you will have a situation looking like this that you have a production rate going like this up to the maximum <coughs> maximum level of the stock and then you stop producing and you will have a demand rate continuing at the same level as in a similar uh, similar uh, purchasing problem. And then again, you have to start production, reach the top level, and then you will have only a demand here. So now we are talking about uh, two different parts of the cycle. The cycle time will still be the time which goes between you start one production run and you start the next production run. And this is denoted as the T, but now, in addition, we can talk about this period from start until stop of production. This is called T, denoted as T1, and called the uptime. The time, the inventory level, will go upwards. And then you, when you reach this top, you will stop production and you will have only a demand until you need to start the production again. <coughs> and then, of course, when you are producing, you will also have a demand. Uh, so the demand is at a fixed rate, given usually as an annual demand, but this can be uh, well, it can be divided by 12 to get a monthly demand or a daily demand. It is, as given here, as a fixed rate. And the demand will also be uh, going on in the uptime period, but the inventory level will increase since the, pr the production rate needs to be higher than the demand rate. Otherwise, this will not be, be feasible. <coughs> uh, so, we then we need w when calculating the costs we need to uh, adjust the inventory level because the number of units we are producing in this period will not be exactly the same as the let's call that h the top level of the stock but we will actually be producing more items than the maximum level of the stock since we have a demand in the uptime period here so the q actual value of q will be up here but the stock will never reach this value because you have a demand going on in in the uptime period 
So then you can see the adjusted EOQ uh, formula, also often called the EPQ, economic production quantity, but here they use the EOQ with finite production rate. And then the Q value, the number of items to produce, will, yeah, in this K should be the uh, capital K as used in, in other, uh, or, or anyway, here, here they differ by the setup cost, which is the small k, and the ordering cost in the, uh, <coughs> in the ordering uh, problem. But anyway, this is now the, the setup cost, the cost of setting up a machine for ex uh, producing this particular product. So, to find the optimal size of the batch to produce, in this case, 2 multiplied by the setup cost, multiplied by the annual demand, and divided by still the holding cost, the H, but with a mark here, which denotes that you need to adjust for the production time, or the, the production rate, uh, in according to, uh, compared to the demand rate which is shown here, that this value, this H value, will be the internal uh, or the holding cost per unit, as we have found earlier, but it needs to be adjusted by 1 minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. So here, the H mark will be the holding cost, which uh, will be in a similar purchase situation and multiplied by 1 minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. <coughs> and here this is not feasible if the demand rate is higher than the production rate. Then you will have a higher demand than you are able to produce and you will not be able to you should, of course, produce as much as possible because you will sell it immediately. Uh, but usually you will have the situation where the demand rate is smaller than the production rate and then 1 minus this fraction will now be the fraction where you should adjust the holding cost with. So this will now be the similar situation as I have tried to show here which is, yeah, well, the, the figure in the book will have the correct uh, here. They are missing something in this figure, missing the P minus lambda, it should be here, which is the slope, the production rate minus the demand rate, since you are selling even in the production period. And the slope should be minus lambda, minus the demand rate for this period, which is the down time period. T1 is uptime, T2 is downtime. <coughs> uh, and then the units consumed will be the demand rate multiplied by the time period. Uh, and then this should be equal to the units to, to produce. So Q will be equal to the demand rate multiplied by the time period given in a fraction of a year. And this is equal to how much you should produce here. This is how much you will use in the full cycle time here. <coughs> so then we can also see that this slope when producing is uh, P minus lambda, which also can be seen as the H divided by the T1, the uptime uh, period, uh, which also is the, the top level of, uh, of the stock. So that this number here is the H, the top level of the stock, which is also uh, found by the uh, production rate uh, minus the, the demand rate, and we can find that the uh, maximum inventory level, which is H, Q, 
can be uh, denoted as uh, the Q multiplied by 1 minus this fraction, which is 1 minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. So this fraction is now what will tell how much inventory you will have on stock and which also should be used to find the average inventory on, uh, 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 on stock which should be used for, for calculating the <coughs> for calculating the costs. So the average inventory level will be this H value divided by 2. And then we can use this in the formula uh, to calculate the costs. And we know that the average annual cost will be the still the holding cost or, or the setup cost will be the same g of a given q will have a setup cost as uh, k or lambda <coughs> divided by q multiplied by k and plus now one half to find the average of Q adjusted with this fraction and multiplied by the holding cost. So this will now be the formula for calculating the cost in a production situation. You need to adjust the level of the stock, so it's not uh, the maximum level will not longer be Q, but it will be Q multiplied by 1 minus the, production, uh, the demand rate divided by the production rate. <coughs> so, I can try to go through one more example which is uh, also from the, the textbook, example 4.3 on page 219, which is uh, regarding this uh, production situation. Uh, and as mentioned, I have some, uh, some other solutions on some other problems, which I will upload in, in front there, which you should, should study by, by yourself. But I will go through one more example today, and then I will continue with, uh, with the discounts and uh, uh, different types of, of discounts and how we can adjust this EOQ formula to discounts. I will continue with that part on, uh, um, on next uh, Wednesday, next week. So, So let's now look at example 4.3 on page 219, and uh, this is uh, production. This is a uh, production company producing uh, computer uh, memory. And we can find that we have a demand of uh, 2,500 per year in this problem. Uh, and we have a production rate, which means how much can we produce if we are utilizing the production capacity in full, which is 10,000. And we can see that this is feasible since the production rate is higher than the demand rate. Uh, we are also given information that the K value is 50. The ordering cost is 50. We know that the C value, the unit value, is 2. And the interest rate is given to be 30%, 0 0.3. So now we have, well, we should have enough information here to try to solve this problem. 
We know the demand rate, the production rate, the ordering cost, the unit value, and the interest rate. Uh, and then we can easily find the holding cost per unit for one full year, which is C multiplied by I, unit value multiplied by interest rate, CI, 2 multiplied by 0 0.3, which is, of course, 0 0.6. Uh, but we know that this is a production situation. We are producing these uh, memory cards, and then we will produce, and we need to adjust the inventory level according to the production and, and the demand in the uptime period. So we can also use or find the H mark, which we remember was the value of H, which we found here, 0 0.6, multiplied by 1 minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. which is 0 0.6 multiplied by 1 minus 2,500 divided by 10,000. Like this. This is 25% uh, and 1 minus 25% is 75%. Which means that the holding cost will only be 75% of the holding cost for a similar uh, purchase situation, where you eventually would have get the whole delivery at the same time. <coughs> so now, 75% of 0 0.6 will be 0 0.45. And this is now the value we should use when we are calculating the holding cost. Uh, so the Q value can be found, the optimal Q can be found by using the EPQ or the adjusted EOQ formula, 2k lambda divided by the H mark and the square root of course. So the values would be the same but instead of 0 0.6 we have to divide by 0 0.45, <coughs> which will give a value of 745. So the optimal order size or the optimal production batch size in this case will be 745. And we can also see here that since this value will be sm smaller, necessarily smaller than the H value, the holding cost per unit, you should produce more items than you would have ordered in a similar situation where you are ordering from an external vendor. If you had all these values, except the production rate of course, and uh, were ordering from another vendor, then the order size would be smaller than actually what you uh, should produce by yourself. And this is of course because the top level of the stock, the maximum stock, will not be as high when you have a demand in the uptime period here. <coughs> so let's find the cycle time, and the cycle time would still be the Q value divided by the lambda value. Order size divided by the demand, the annual demand, which in this case 745 divided by 2,500, which is 0 0.298. And this is now the fraction of the year. 0 0.298, which is approximately 3.6 months. But we can now also find the value of the uptime, the T1. How long should you produce? Because the uptime period, this period, still the Q value will be the same. You have to produce 745. This is found here as the optimal production uh, size. 
but instead of dividing by the demand rate, you should now divide by the production rate. This will give us how much time do we need to produce 745 units. And the production rate is 10,000 per year, which means that 745 divided by 10,000 is 0 0.0745. as the fraction of the year for the uptime period. So here you should produce for full in 0 0.0745, which is approximately 0 0.9 months. So produce for almost a month until you have reached 745 units, then stop production and wait. And the total cycle time is 0 0.298 this period uh, until you have no inventory left and then you should start to produce again. Uh, and of course we can also very easily find the down time period because the T2 will be T minus T1. It's the simplest way to, to calculate the down time period. 0 0.298 minus 0 0.0745 uh, will be 0 0.2235, uh, which is approximately 2.7 months, the difference between the full cycle time and the uptime period. So we can also try to find the average annual cost or the relevant cost and still we don't care about the purchase cost or the production cost because they will be a constant but the g function the cost function g of q will be k multiplied uh, or uh, lambda divided by q multiplied by k plus one half for the average size of the stock multiplied by Q but adjusted by the fraction we have seen here. The fraction one minus lambda divided by P. And multiplied by the holding cost the H mark, which we already have calculated to be 0 0.45 here. And this will be a total of 335.41 in this case. And we can also compare the two cost elements if you want and find that the ordering cost and the holding cost is exactly the same also in this situation. So the optimal production size in a production uh, problem will follow the same rules as we have seen for, for the, the ordering situation. That the ordering cost and the holding cost will be at the same level. <coughs> and again we can try to answer the last question here, the maximum level of the inventory, which is now here denoted as the capital H, which will of course depend on Q, but we need to adjust by the fraction we have found uh, to be 1 minus the production, the demand rate divided by the production rate. So Q multiplied by 1 minus lambda divided by p. And we know this is 25%. Uh, 1 minus 25 is 75%. And 75% 75 of 745 will then be 559. So this is the adjustments we need to make on the 
EOQ formula when uh, we are producing instead of uh, uh, buying from an external vendor we need to adjust the holding cost since we do not reach the top level or the top the maximum inventory level will never be the same as the order size or the production size since we are using items even in the um, even in the uptime or, or production period. So, I do not think I can well, have time for start on another topic. The next topic now is uh, about discounts and this has to wait until next week. As mentioned, I will upload a few solutions on the uh, on some of the problems in the textbook in front there, so you should study them and if you have problem understanding, of course you can contact me and I either by email or, uh, or come to my office and I will try to answer. If there is some common problems, I might also present a solution on the, uh, on the lecture.